the this, same behind you because our people are walking what? In the wrong direction. They're walking away from this truth. Our people want to hear anything but the Bible. The title of today's class is called The Purge Continues. The Purge Continues. How many of you seen that movie, The Purge? All right. Okay, not the whole congregation. All right. Great movie. If y'all didn't get a chance, go see it. I think it's still on the fire stick. All right. Uh, let's open up with 1 Peter 4. 1 Peter 4, chapter 17. Verse 17, I'm sorry. 1 Peter 4, verse 17. I don't have my Bible in front of me, so I'm going to trust that you're reading it correctly. It's the book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 17. Mm -hmm. For the time is come that the judgment must begin at the house of God. Read it again. For the time is come mm -hmm. that the judgment must begin at the house of God. So the judgment must begin at the house of God. Somebody explain that. One of the brothers, soldiers, brothers. Read that verse again for them. I want somebody to explain it. I want to make sure you guys understand what's coming out. And it's just not going in one ear and out the other. Okay? Come on. For the, time, for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Somebody explain. Soldier Yakub. since you got the mic already, might as well yes, explain sir. it. Uh, for the t time that the judgment must begin at the house of God, meaning in Israel, amongst, the, uh, amongst God's children. Amongst God's children, which would be us, right? Which would be us, yes, sir. All right, so when we see different things popping up in the congregation, uh, whether it's sickness, illness, accidents, even as far as deaths, what is that? Judgment. Judgment of God. Do we all agree on that? Because yes, there sir. might be some people that don't agree with that. Do we all agree when these things occur amongst us is judgment? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Read. Thank you. Read it again. Verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Read. And if it first begin at us... What shall the end be for them that obey not the gospel of God? So if it begins in the house of Israel, what is the end going to be for those who obey not the gospel of God? Meaning those who are without, like those still in the Christian church, those outside of these walls still in the world. The judgment is going to fall on them as well. Okay? And it's going to fall on us. Even though we say that we're Israelites and we're striving to keep God's commandments, the Most High is still going to check us. The Most High is going to check those who say they are about God. And he's going to put little obstacle courses in our way to prove us. It's not, going to, it's not going to be an easy walk in the park. A lot of you think that this is going to be an easy walk in the park. No, there's going to be trials and tribulations and temptations set before you to try you, whether to see if you're of God or whether to see if you're of the devil. It's either one of those two. You're either of God or you're of the devil. And a lot of times the devil jumps on us, and we got to be honest with ourselves. Honesty is the number one key to overcoming. If, you, if you're not honest with the spirit that you have, whether it be murmuring, gossiping, backbiting, lying, stealing, adultery, you're not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because you're just sitting in these chairs wearing a purple outfit, deceiving yourselves. You come in here, you're all holy, but when you leave, you're... you're Back to the old Negro again. Okay? So we have to change. The, the laws of God is what corrects us and it forces us to change. But we have to have a willing spirit. We can't force you to, to change. All these classes come out. Many days of atonements go by and we're still the same people. It's still the same thing. The same name is popping up every week. This sister's doing this. 
a person got a problem with this sister. Person got a problem with this brother. His brother's back in adultery. He's back in fornication. Sister, the same thing. It's the same name all the time. And we cannot have that going amongst, going on amongst the body of Israel at all. Okay? There's going to be zero tolerance for such things. All right? Read. Verse 18. And if righteousness scarcely be saved, scarcely be saved. So what does that mean? For the righteous shall scarcely be saved. Officer Mike Judah. The scriptures say that the righteous going to uh, barely get in. We, we're the ones who barely going to get in. So if the righteous scarcely must going to be saved, then what about people who are not keeping the commandment? Now you said barely get in. Why, why, does this, why are you using those words as far as barely getting in into the kingdom? Um, barely getting in because with all our righteousness is still like filthy rags to the most high. We, we're not, we're, according to the law, we're worthy of death. Mm -hmm. So by even us practicing our righteousness here, we barely going to make it. So the ones who are not doing it at all, it's, it's Very good. Very scarcely good. for them. So I, I like what you quoted, and um, that's from Isaiah, right? The righteous, our righteousness is like filthy rags, filthy ministers rags amongst the Most High. So basically, how are we going to make it? Through the mercy and grace of Christ, us continually confessing our faults one to another, right? And being honest with ourselves. A lot of us, we lack that self-honesty. Why? Because you're not examining yourselves. You're too busy examining others. You're quick to point the finger, but when it comes to yourself, you're not examining yourself at all. There's no self-examination. And because of that, God said he's going to happily put you to death. Okay? When the Most High put us to death, he, he doesn't shed a tear, especially if we die in evil. And a lot of us, we don't believe that. We, are still, we still have a lot of unbelievers amongst us. Is that verse 19? Um, still on 18, sir. Come on. Verse 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved... Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Mm -hmm. Verse 19. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God. Let them that suffer, meaning you're going to be persecuted regardless. Even if you're walking in righteousness, guess what? You're still going to be hated amongst people in the world, your job. Even in here, there's going to be congregational issues which we must overcome. So the Bible says if the righteous be persecuted, come on. Verse 19. Verse 19. Wherefore, let them that suffer accordingly to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls. So if... You, oh. That's it on that? Or you, no, sir, there's more. But just, Go ahead. Come okay. on. Okay. All right. Commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing. In well-doing, we're supposed to keep our souls to the most high. And we all know that's what? keeping of God's commandments and the faith of his son. All right? Clear, cut, and easy. The Bible is redundant. It says the same thing over and over and over. The thing is, do you want to apply it? Do you truly believe or not? That's on you. That's your walk. All right? Get me Luke 12, verse 47. Give me Luke chapter 12, verse 47. Because the, the scripture says that the righteous shall scarcely make it. So how much more the sinner if the righteous shall scarcely make it, how much more the sinner? Come on. It's the book of Luke, chapter 12, verses 47. Mm -hmm. And that servant which knew his Lord's will. Those who know his will are us in here. We profess to be Israelites, so we know God's will. We know what the Bible says about murmuring, about gossiping, about backbiting, about not showing love to your brothers and sisters about adultery, fornication. We know what the Bible says, but the question is, do we want to apply? Read it again. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, and there did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. So the servant that knew God's will, which is us, 
knew his will but did it not, we shall be beaten with many stripes. Because why? The Most High is requiring more of us. Because we know his mysteries. We know his laws. In the Christian church, they don't even know that shaving your beard is a sin. Is God going to judge them? Of course. God is going to judge them based on ignorance. They're still going to get judged, but how much more we? Because we know God's laws. We know that shaving your beard is a sin. We know that um, woman in pants is a sin. Murmuring, gossiping, adultery, fornication, lying, stealing. We know that. So if we know it's a sin, why continue therein? Why? F to fulfill the lust of the flesh for a season? And then pay, and pay for it with your life at the end? Now you lose the kingdom? Because we know that the kingdom is rulership over the whole planet Earth and everything in it and eternal life under our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Why give that up? Why give that up to satisfy your own flesh? Read. Verse 48. But he that knew it not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. So he that walked in ignorance, shall be beaten with few stripes. So they're still going to get punished. But who's going to catch the most stripes? Brothers? Us. That's why in 1 Peter 4 it says that what? Judgment shall begin first at the house of God. Meaning those who know his laws. Those people in here. Us. Give me 2 Ezra chapter 7 verse 14. 2 Ezra chapter 7 verse 14. Let me read, read a little bit faster. Don't pause between each word. It's the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 7, verses 14. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they that can never receive those that are laid up for them. Read it again, 2 Ezra chapter 7, verse 14 again. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they can never receive those that are laid up for them. All right, somebody explain that. Mike Judah, explain that, and I want you to read. Let Mike Judah read. It says, if they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, if they that live labor not, if you don't do the work that it takes to get into the kingdom. Okay. Explain the straight part where it says straight. That's S-T-R-A-I-T. -T. It means hard, d difficult, narrow. Okay. Come on. Right. Explain that. The straight is the commandments. He gave us straight laws and commandments that we must do to enter into the kingdom, which is in verse 21. Straight laws, meaning no, not to go to the left, not to go to the right. The Most High gave us straight laws. Okay? And vain things, they can never receive those that are laid up for them. What is that making reference to? You can never receive the promises that this Bible got for you. If you don't, if you don't keep the commandments, you don't labor and... and, and Keep the straight commandments. You'll never get the promises that the Bible tells us we're going to get. Exactly. Very good. All right? Stay right there. I want you to read. Um, an example of that. I'll give you an example. The Most High says that we have to labor to enter into the straight gates, right? And we can never receive those things that are laid up for them, which is the kingdom. The kingdom is laid up for us. I'll give you an example. Murmuring. The Most High speaks against that. Is that a sin? All right. I can't hear y'all. Y'all don't sound sure. Okay. Is backbiting a sin? Okay. Let's just deal with those two for now. Okay. There's many other sins, but let's deal with those two. What are some things that the Most High has in place for us, for us not to fall into that murmuring spirit and that backbiting spirit? Somebody. Let me get Zerubbabel. Give him a mic. Mike, who has the mic? Come on, pay attention, y'all. Uh, to stop the backbiting, you have laws set up, like go to your brother if you have an art with him and so forth, so you don't have to worry about the backbiting. Very good. Like, Where can I find that law? In the book of Matthew. All right, so that would be a solution, a solution to the disease, 
the diarrhea of the mouth called murmuring and backbiting. Okay? And it's really not so amongst the brothers. That usually falls on this side, the sisters. Okay? I know that's something that the sisters battle. Okay? Let's read Matthew 18. Because a lot of us, we don't like to apply that. We like to run to Facebook and apply Matthew 18 with Facebook. Where the whole world sees your business. The person's name that you have a problem with or an issue with is not even on there. So it's like indirect jabs. Just go to your brother or sister directly. God has the solution written in the Bible so you don't fall into that murmuring spirit. So it doesn't overcome you. So that backbiting spirit doesn't overcome you. Now you're drowning in sin and there's no way out. Because that murmuring, that backbiting turns into hatred. Hatred is murder. Can murderers enter into the kingdom of heaven? Is that a new thing under the sun? No. If you're a murderer, you can't enter into the kingdom. If you, if you hate your brother or sister, you can't enter into the kingdom. So why murmur? Why backbite? That's like the new thing now with social media. I just got on Facebook. Look how fa long Facebook been out. I just got on Facebook. I'm late in the game. But some people, that's like their, their job. Just Facebook, 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 Facebook all day. Spew all your madness on Facebook. Post all your problems on Facebook so everybody can hear. Instead of going to your brothers and sisters one-on-one, -on -one, you want to post what problems you have on Facebook. That is a weak spirit, and that is an evil spirit, and that's something that we have to check. All right? Who had it? Who had Matthew 18? The book of Matthew chapter 18 and verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Now, that's written in the masculine form, but it's also talking about you sisters. If there's a problem, you go to your sister alone. Not if she stepped on your shoes by accident. I'm talking about a real problem. If there's a problem between you and your sisters, you go to them alone. Read. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. And guess what? By you... Approaching your sister on the side, it doesn't have to be in front of everybody. Pull it to the side. Hey, sister, come outside. Let me talk to you for a second. Let me holler at you before I leave. So that's it. If you gained the sister, because maybe the sister did something and she didn't know that she was offending you. Woman are emotional. She probably did something, probably didn't hug you, whatever, looked at you a certain way, and you got all crazy and, and fanatic. So guess what? You go to the sister alone and if she understands and she says, you know what, sister, my bad. Guess what? You gained your sister by just applying that one little solution. Come on. But if he will not hear thee. But if he or she will not hear thee. Then take with thee one or two more. But take one or two more witnesses because people lie. So take two witnesses. To so be like, this sister did this. She offended me. I approached her about it. And she told me, F you. Or she told me, go to hell. So now you take another sister, which would be a witness, and you go to that sister. Come on. That in the mouth of two or three witness. In the mouth of two or three, not one witness. Two or three witness. Come on. Every word may be established. Come on, every word may be established. Because then that can cut back on all the lying. Okay, come on. And. If he shall neglect to hear thee. And if the sister or brother that you approach shall neglect to hear you. I hope you sisters are listening because this is mainly falling on you guys. Because every week is a different issue with the sisters and I'm really trying to be patient. Come on. Tell it unto the church. Tell it unto the church. So you bring the sister that you had a problem with and you tell it unto the church. Okay. And it will bring it out. We will bring it out. Come on. But if he neglect to hear the church. And if that hard-headed sister neglects to hear the church let him be unto thee as an heathen man or and a publican can a heathen man can a heathen man congregate with us no we'll put the sister out until she gets her mind right and some of you brothers are married to sisters like this and you have no shame at all some of you might even have rank married to sisters like this and you have no shame at all you can't get your house in order so how can you get the nation in order? Why? You're still weak. You need more time to learn. You need more time to grow up and be a man and learn how to run your wife, run your house like God intended it for you to be. Stop letting your woman run you. The drawers are so damn good you can't even correct her because you're afraid she'll probably leave you. 
Stop being, stop being weak, manby pambies, and correct your house. You call yourself a soldier, you call yourself an officer, captain, deacon, or even bishop. Correct your house. Make sure your wife is in order. Your wife's name should not be coming up every week. Every week, it's the same sister. So what the hell is going on at home? What's going on at home with you brothers? Somebody ain't teaching. Somebody's not teaching their wife. But you want to go and stand on the corner with camp signs and flyers. Brothers, get, get in order. Sister, don't do this. Brother, you got to repent. Meanwhile, back at the house, your wife, she's running laps around you. Crazy. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Go back to 2 Ezra. Chapter 7. Start at verse 14 again. 2 Ezra chapter 7 and verse 14. Mm -hmm. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they can never receive those that are laid up for them. And a lot of us think that is just the application of God's laws within ourselves. I'll give you an example. As long as I'm not in adultery, as long as I'm not stealing, lying, I'm good. But if my wife is out of order, that's on her. I'm just going to get the kingdom and I'm going to have like 20-something other wives. But the, king, the Bible says to, that the two become one flesh and you shall seek to be joint heirs together. Together, brothers. So you have to get your wife in order. There's no way around it. Unless, you know, you just want to come, hang out, throw on a purple shirt, and just be a brother forever. That's all right. You could be a brother forever. Just let us know. Just come to the front. Brother, I'm too weak. I can't get my wife in order. All right? I'm called but not chosen. Let me just be a brother. We'll have no problem with that. Just let us know from the jump. All right? Verse, verse 15. Verse 15. Now, therefore, why disquietest thou thyself? Seeing thou art but a corruptible man. So we are but a corruptible man. Come on. And why art thou moved, whereas thou art but mortal? Come on. Why hast thou not considered in thy mind this thing that is to come, mm -hmm. rather than that which is present? Come on. Then answered I and said, O Lord, that bearest rule, thou hast ordained in thy law that the righteous should inherit these things, but that the ungodly should perish. So the righteous is going to inherit the things as far as the, the, the kingdom of heaven. And the ungodly is going to perish. Read. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things. And so the righteous shall suffer straight things. What is that talking about? Soldier Josias, what is that talking about? Uh, you just gave the answer a while ago. Uh, pretty much difficult things. We're going to struggle. We're going to go through judgments and trials and tribulations. Okay, now stay there. Is it difficult sometimes for brothers in the congregation to get along? No. It's not difficult. So everybody in here on, on a one accord. There's no discord amongst the brothers. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so it's hard for brothers to get along. Why? Because a lot of us, when we come out of the world, we got spirits on us. We all didn't grow up from childhood with each other. I just met this brother. I just met this brother. But he's my brother in Christ, so I know he's trying to walk the way I'm trying to walk, according to Christ. So by us trying to apply the commandments, that's what makes us brothers outside of the flesh. That's what makes us spiritual brothers. So we're going to have congregational issues. Is that correct, Soldier Josiah? Yes, sir. All right. So those are the straight and difficult paths that it's talking about. All right? Good, brother. So we're going to have congregational issues. We're going to have issues in marriage with the spouses. Okay? We're going to have all these different kind of issues. And we're going to have issues going on within ourselves that we must correct. All right? Read. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for why. For they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things, and yet shall not see the wide. Mm. So for they that have done wickedly, meaning those who knew the commandments, they have suffered straight things, and yet shall not see the wide. The wide is the kingdom. So you have those who are trying to walk the straight paths, but they are doing wicked things. And they can't repent of it. God says, you shall not. See the wide, meaning the kingdom. 
Come on. And he said unto me, there is no judge above God. So God is the one that we got to fear. Not me, but God. We're all reading out the same Bible. I mean, I'm not reading a new uh, King James Version Bible. This is not the Tisdale. I'm not speaking in Hebrew. We're all reading the same Bible. So if we say we fear God, we understand that God is the ultimate judge. Read. And none that had understanding above the highest. Mm -hmm. For there be many that perish in this life. Many of us are going to die in this life. Not every single per person sitting in this classroom is going to live until they see the second coming of Christ. A lot of us is going to die before Christ comes. But we want to die in what? Righteousness. Righteousness, brothers and sisters. That's the key. Righteousness. Come on. Because they despise the law of God mm -hmm. that is set before them. Mm -hmm. For God had given straight commandments to such as Cain. What they should do to live. So God gave us straight commandments, what we should do to live. Live in this present life and that we can have eternal life after. Come on. Even as they came. Even as they came. And what they should, should observe to avoid punishment. And what they should do to avoid punishment. Some of us are, glut, are glutton for punishment. We just want to be, why the hell do you want to be punished? Especially this kind of punishment. Eternal damnation. That fire that, 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 that burns the soul that you can't put out. You know when somebody gets... I don't know if y'all ever seen a video of people set on fire. They rolling around, jumping, screaming. And then eventually they just drop dead. But this fire is a fire that burneth forever. So that pain is there forever, but it never goes away. It's forever. Why? Why do you want to suffer like that? When the Most High is putting commandments in front of you to avoid the punishment. Why is it so hard for sisters to get along? I mean, damn, the sister's not trying to sleep with your husband. That's one thing if she's trying to creep up in your crib and sleep with your husband. And you see that spirit on her, but sisters can't get along. Sisters trying to go to sister's house. People not opening the door. You invited the sister to your house. You invited. She didn't come unannounced. You invited the sister to your crib. She gets to the door. And all you hear is, shh, shh. Mad loud too, not even not even low, not even low. The sister's so 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 dumb in her mind, not even on a on a humble. She waits for the sister, shh, don't say nothing. <laughs> but you invited the sister to your house to help you out, to come clean, to come cook, to watch your, your kids. She comes to your house to help you out. Now you don't want to open the door. But why invite the sister to your house? Now, if the sister would have got into a car accident, it would have been a different story. Could have been a car accident. Something could have happened. With the sisters traveling to your crib to help you out, she gets to the door and you turn into a nigger. Don't want to don't wanna open the door. When you could have just called the sister and be like, look, you know what? It's okay. I'm all right. Uh, you can stay back. I don't need help. You wait until she gets to your crib. Where's the sister anyway? Is she here? Is she here? What's her name? She's not here. Oh, how befitting. This is the stuff that I'm hearing. And it, it irks me to where I just want to start throwing people out. Come on. Verse Sisters like that, you leave them to the side. Let them, let them rot in their own demise. Let them rust away. We can't keep handing, lending out hands, burning bridges. I mean, how many bridges are you going to burn? Sisters like that, just stay home, learn online. Brothers like that, you stay home, learn online. Don't bring that evil spirit in here. Come on. Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 22. Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him, mm -hmm. but spake against him and imagined vain things. Come on. And deceived The vain them. thing that you imagine is that you're going to keep coming here on a Sabbath, professing yourself to be Israel, but behind the scene, you're the devil on earth, and then somehow... God is going to forget all that you've been doing behind the scenes, and you're going to enter into the kingdom of God. You have got to be kidding me. You are deceiving yourselves. You are imagining vain things. Come on. And deceived themselves by their wicked deeds mm -hmm. and said of the Most High that he is not. Because that's what you're saying when you're doing that. Right? God doesn't exist. You might as well be an atheist. Go out, chill, club. Go back to the short skirts, the tights, the twerking. Do what you got to do. But why stay in here 
Why stay in here and still keep that old man or that old woman? It makes no sense. Why? You're just wasting your time. Come on. And knew not his ways, but his law have they despised. And when we do that, we despise his laws. The laws on brothers and sisters, the love, the unity of brethren. Because that's hatred. If, I'm, if I need, let's say, construction. I, I suck with that, by the way. I'm not a handyman. All right, my wife will be the first to tell you. I, I'd rather pay somebody to fix something. I ain't staying here three, four hours reading some directions. On, ugh, I hate that thing with a passion. All right? But if I need help and I say, Soldier Caleb, come to my house at 4 p.m. Come help me put this thing together. I need help. 4 p.m. comes. Soldier Caleb come to the, comes to the house. And I know he's coming. He knocks on the door, rings the bell. I don't open the door for the brother. But in the back, I'm telling my son, hey, shh, be quiet. Don't, don't say nothing. I don't want the brother to hear you. So Caleb could have got into an accident. A lot of things. He had to put time away from his family to come to my crib to help me out. So that's that no gratitude, nigga, Babylonian mind state that we have to come up out of. Okay? We have to give that up, man. We can't keep bringing in all the garbage that we have in the world, the way we used to treat each other in the world, into Israel. Can't do it. Can't do it. And there's no place inside of IUIC for that kind of spirit at all. Read. But his law have they despised and denied his covenants. Mm. In his statutes have they not been faithful mm -hmm. and have not performed his works. So we have to be faithful and we have to perform the works, the straight works of the Most High God. If not, we despise God. If not, we hate God. And what's going to happen? We're going to perish. We're not hurting God. You're just hurting yourself. You're not hurting God. You're just hurting yourself. Okay? Get me 2 Ezra chapter 7. Go back up to uh, verse 6. We're still in um, chapter 7. Jump to verse 6 and read down to 9. The book of 2 Ezra chapter 7 and verse 6. There is also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. What city is this, brothers? Jerusalem. Very good. Come on. The entrance thereof is narrow. There we go again. The entrance thereof is narrow. You're trying to walk that path, but you want to carry a little bit of adultery in your pocket. A little bit of fornication here. A little bit of murmuring. A little bit of backbiting. Mm, let me try to go into the kingdom, but I'll carry a little bit of that lying spirit with me. No, 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 no. That's not going to happen. You're either going to fall in the water to your left or the fire on your right. Choose one. And you see how the Most High is a genius. He destroyed the first world with water. Now he he's going to destroy the second world with fire. That's why those two things are written in the book of Esdras on that narrow path. God is letting you know something. You are not going to sneak into the kingdom of heaven with your folly. It's impossible. You're just deceiving yourselves. Come on. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall. Mm-hmm. Like as if there were a fire on the right hand, uh -huh. and on the left, a deep water. Read. And one only path between them both, mm -hmm. even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. So that's to the people that like to form these cliques. Birds in the feather flock together. That's the people that like to form these cliques. You got the, the brothers that love adultery click. You got the, the sisters that love to murmur click. You got the, the, um, the Alcoholics Anonymous click. You got all these different cliques in Israel. Okay, we're not supposed to walk like that. Because what? guess what? We could only walk this path ourselves. So if your brother or sister are falling into, into something that you know is um, going to get them death later on, your best chances to what? Brothers? I can't hear y'all. Correct them. Your best chance is to correct them. And if they don't want that correction, you know their blood is off your hands. Okay? We always have to remember that. Read. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, uh -huh. if he never shall pass the danger set before it. That's trials and temptations. It's not going to be an easy walk. Sisters, you're not going to get along with everybody. But you can't come out the spirit when talking to your sisters. We shouldn't be cursing each other out. 
We should be able to apply Matthew 18 with each other. Shouldn't it be Facebook Matthew 18, but one-on-one. Shouldn't it be Instagram Matthew 18. Go to your sister. Go to your brother. Read. How shall he receive this inheritance? If you can't, if you cannot overcome the congregational issues, how are you going to inherit the kingdom of God? You're going to be the same nigga woman and the same nigga man in the kingdom. And we know that's not happening. If you can't overcome these things here, and, and it's not even a lot of people. We don't have a lot of people in this congregation towards 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 members. If you can't overcome the small things here, how the hell do you in, expect to make the kingdom? Brothers, if you can't get your wives in order, how are you going to get the nations in order? How you expect to... Christ, Christ is going to look at you and say, you've been faithful and little here. Be a ruler now over this city, over China. You're going to get China in order, but you can't get your two-bedroom, three-bedroom apartment in order with your wife? Come on, brothers. Don't fool yourselves, man. This is a dangerous walk that we're in. There's a reason why we, we, when we drink the bread and we, and we, when we drink the bread, when we eat the bread, when we eat the bread and drink the wine, there's a heavy meaning before that. This is a tough walk we're in, man. This ain't the Christian church where well, you could do as you please. Brothers, I'm telling you, y'all better walk circumspect, examine yourselves. Come on. And I said, it is so, Lord. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. You hear that? There is also Israel's portion. That's our portion in this life. What, um, what verse are you at again? Verse 11. Okay, that's it. All right, so there is therefore Israel's portion. Get me 2 Timothy 2, verse 20. And Amiel, if you got something to bring out, you can bring it out. You too, officer, all right? 2 Timothy 2, verse 20. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver. That's but this. This is the great house. This is the house of the Most High. And we all want to be that vessel of gold and that vessel of silver. Come on. But also of wood and of earth. Of wood and of earth. Come on. And some to honor uh -huh. and some to dishonor. So you have the choice, brothers and sisters. Do you want to be a vessel unto honor or you want to be a vessel unto dishonor? Now, how would you know that you're that vessel unto dishonor? Well, when your name keeps popping up in the congregation, every other month, suspension comes or you got to get put out or you got to get written up or you got to get admonished and you can't fix that problem. So you endure, 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 and then at the end, when those nukes come, and those chariots come, you're not beamed up. You're here. You're walking charcoal. That's how you know you are that vessel unto dishonor. Come on. Verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto purge honor. Purge himself. That's why I titled it The Purge Continues. Now, that's self-purge by self-examination. And that's also the most high purging your simple behinds out of the body and putting you to death because you don't want to repent. Come on. If a man therefore purge himself from these, mm -hmm. he shall be a vessel unto honor. But if you purge yourself from the murmuring, the backbiting, the lying, the stealing, the adultery, the fornication, come on, you shall be a vessel unto what? Unto honor. Now we all battle things. I'm not even exempt from this. I have things that I have to overcome. I'm not greater than anyone in here. But I'm just letting you know you better strive and you better make perfect. And your name better not be keep coming up every single week. It's the same sister. Every single week, it's the same brother. We're not going to have that in here. It's going to be a zero tolerance. Zero tolerance. Come on. Sanctified and meet for the master's use. So you want to be meat for the master's use. That master is Christ. That master is God. You want to be meat for his use. When you're a vessel of dishonor, you're not useful. The only thing you're useful for is, is fire. Food for fire. Come on. And prepared unto every good work. Uh-huh. Come on. Flee also youthful lust. Useful, youthful lust. Many of us battle that. Many of us are battling youthful lust, whether it be pornography and other things. That's something that we have to overcome. Come on. 
but follow righteousness. Follow righteousness. Come on. Faith. Faith. Charity. Charity. Loving each other the way we love ourselves. You speaking to a sister, you don't want a sister to start cursing while she's speaking to you or cursing at you. That's not charity. So why would you do it to another sister? Brothers, you too. You speaking to a brother, you cursing him out. Do effing this. Didn't I tell you to do this? Do I not tell you to do that? But why use those words? Now the brother punch you in your mouth. Now you want to feel bad. But now we got to throw both of y'all out. If you don't want a brother to curse at you, why curse at them? That's charity. Love your brother the way you love yourself. Sisters, same thing. Love the sisters the way you love yourselves. Come on. Peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Come on. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. All right. Let's sit on that. Get me, uh, get me 1 Corinthians 3, verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Now, if any man build up on this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. You hear that? Every man's work shall be made manifest. Whether the Most High bring it out in the body, if you're doing something secret on the side, or until the end. Hey, some of you might be able to get away with it all the way up into the end. Until them nukes come. And they are coming. You better believe it. Come on. For the day shall declare it. For the day of judgment shall declare what you were doing behind the scenes. Is that verse 13? Yes, sir. Okay, drop that. There's more. There's more? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Come on. Because it shall be revealed by fire. It shall what? Be revealed by fire. Now, that's twofold. It shall be revealed by fire as far as tribulations. Temptations is going to reveal what kind of man you are, what kind of woman you are. Are you able to apply and endure? Can you apply Matthew 18 with your brothers and sisters instead of murmuring? Because that's the easy way out. That's a cowardly way out, to tell you the truth. You got a problem with a brother or sister you run on Facebook, but you're, you're, you're not, you don't have the, the fortitude to look at that brother or sister in the eyes and apply Matthew 18. That's that fire, which is going to show what you made about. Show if you're going to apply God's laws. And the second fold, the second meaning behind that is what? What's the other part of the fire? Somebody say it. When them nuke strikes. Okay? That's going to be showed what kind of man or woman we're made of. And brothers know you ain't going to be able to save your spouse. If you know you got a murmuring, wicked woman at home, guess what? You ain't going to be, unless she repent. She can repent as long as her heart is beating and she's still in this truth. But if she's a demonic, dragon, fang, tooth wife, ain't going to be nothing you could do. When them nukes come, goodbye. All right? Read. Come on. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. You see? And the fire shall try every man's work for what sort it is. Come on. That's it. That's it on that? Let's get First Peter's now again. First Peter's chapter 4. We're going to read 1 through 5. First Peter chapter 4, verse 1. For as much then as Christ had suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. So Christ suffered for us in the flesh. Did Christ sin? Christ didn't sin. He had to pre pre present his flesh as a living sacrifice, an unblemished living sacrifice for us to be here. Because many of us was in adultery, idolatry. All of us deserve to be put to death. Like Officer Mike Judah brought out earlier, all our righteousness is counted as a filthy rag. So Christ died on the cross for us so we can have what? Eternal life. Come on. For he that had suffered in the flesh had ceased from sin. Mm hmm that he no longer should have, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men. So we don't want to live in our flesh to the lust of men, but to what? But to the will of God. And that's something that we have to practice every day. And it's gonna be, there's gonna be stumbles along the way. Nobody in here is perfect, but the laws of God is gonna make us perfect. We have to strive. We have to do better. We can't be that same man every year. We got the Day of Atonement coming on. 
A lot of people, you wait for the Day of Atonement, you fast, you pray, you anoint, you repent of your sins, and the very next day you're going right back to that old man, that old, adulterous, whoremongering man that doteth about, that murmuring, backbiting, dragon woman at home. Self-examination, y'all. You want to be that vessel unto honor, or you want to be that vessel unto dishonor? The choice is yours. Come on. For the time past of our life may suffice us mm -hmm. to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. The gen those Gentiles that is making reference to is our people in a Gentile state of mind. Okay? Because what? They're not doing the will of God. Even the other nations, they're not doing the will of God. And we've been what? We have been living their will. But now the Most High has woken us up that we are the children of God. Now we got to do whose will? God's will. Come on. When we walk in lasciviousness. We walk in lasciviousness, evil sexual sins. Come lust. On. Lust, come on. Excess of wine. Excess of wine, come on. Reveling. Reveling. Banqueting, Banqueting. come on. And abominable idolatries. And abominable idolatries. Read on. Wherein they think it's strange that ye run not with them. And a lot of our brothers and sisters in the world, they think it's strange. When they see the sisters wearing the dresses with the fringes, not eating pork anymore, keeping the Sabbath, not going to clubs anymore, they think that you're strange. In all actuality, they're the strange ones because they're not applying the will of God. So if that's the case, why not be that example to them? Why not be that example to our brothers and sisters in the world? Why go back home and you still got the same devil on you? You still watching worldly things? Faking the funk. Faking the funk. Come on. Wherein they think it's strange that you run not with them. And they to think the, it's strange that when we don't run with them, come on. To the same excess of riot. Excess of riot. Excess of riot. Uh -huh. Speaking evil to you. Speaking evil of you. Of you. So, so they speak evil of us because we're not doing it. We're not living that lifestyle no more. We call ourselves repentant Israelites under Christ. So they're going to speak evil of you. Your friends, your family in the world, they're going to speak evil of you. So that's why we got to walk this walk. Because if you don't finish the walk that you're, you say you're walking, you're going to become a laughing stock. You're going to become a laughing stock. All right? Read verse 5. Verse 5. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? Who is that? What is that talking about? Who knows? Who knows? Officer Yahalom. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? Who's going to judge us? Good, very good, okay? Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? All right. Give me First Peter 2, verse 1. Saying that same book, chapter 2, verse 1. First Peter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice. See that, sisters, brothers? Laying aside all malice. And all guile. All guile, trickery, come on. And hypocrisies. Hypocrisies. And, en and envy. And envy, come on. And all evil speaking, Murmuring and backbiting is evil speaking. Come on. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. And these are the things, these little laws that help us overcome what we just read in verse 1. Those are the, those, that's the milk of the word. The laws, love your neighbor as you love yourself, charity amongst brothers and sisters. Those are the things that we need to overcome, to make the kingdom. Not the prophecies in Daniel or the book of Revelation. Not the deep things. Okay? But these are the little things that we have to apply with each other so we can overcome. Okay? Come on. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, mm -hmm. to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house. So we want to build up a spiritual house. That's what the Most High. The Most High has plans for us, big plans for us. But that Negro mind state, we have to get rid of that thing or the Most High can't use us. Come on. 
and holy priesthood mm -hmm. to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. All oh, praises. All right, drop that. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I want verse 1, and then I want verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud. So and this is speaking about the Israelites when we came up out of Egypt. Okay, come on. And all passed through the, through the sea. Verse 10. Verse Ver 11. I'm sorry, verse 11. Verse 11. Now all these things happened unto them for example, So a lot of things are going to happen to brothers and sisters in Israel, for examples, on how not to be. The test crash dummy, how not to be. Whether that brother or sister gets put out or situations may happen. So brothers and sisters can be edified. Well, you know what? I'm not going to do that. What that sister did, what that brother did, I'm not going to do that. Because if I do do that, there's going to be consequences. Okay? And we don't make up our own rules, our own laws. The way we bring forth judgment is what's written according to God. Okay, come on. And they were written for an, for an admonition mm -hmm. upon whom the ends of the world are come. So they were written for, for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Okay, so the things written are supposed to correct us and admonish us. That's why the Most High has solutions to every problem that we deal with. Okay, from murmuring, I gave an example in Matthew 18. Adultery, the scripture says to get married. Abstain from uh, fleshly lust. Get married. Especially if you, if you, a brother or sister that likes to have sex often, the best solution for that is to get a spouse. Why go out and commit fornication? Why go out and commit adultery? You're just going to bring judgment to yourself. All right? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 11. Wisdom of Solomon, 1 and 11. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 11. Therefore, beware of murmuring. Therefore what? Beware of murmuring. Wherefore, beware of murmuring. Murmuring. Be beware of murmuring. Come on. Which is unprofitable. It's unprofitable to you. Why do something that's unprofitable? God says it's unprofitable. Come on. And refrain your tongue from backbiting. And refrain your mouth from backbiting. Come on. For there is no word so secret that shall go for naught. You hear that? There's nothing that you're going to say in secret that's not going to come out. That sister that you're confiding with who has the same murmuring, backbiting spirit that you do, guess what? There might be a great chance that that sister might repent of that. And you know who she's going to expose all the evil of? You. Especially you sisters with the cliques. You brothers with the cliques. The stuff that you do in secret will be exposed. It will be revealed. Come on. And the mouth that belieth slayeth the soul. And the mouth that belieth slayeth the soul. Get me number 16. Okay, we're going to read through this history real quick. These are the consequences of that murmuring and backbiting. It happened then. What makes you think it's not going to happen now? Unless you're walking with that atheist spirit and you don't believe. Numbers chapter 16. Let's start at verse 1. Numbers chapter 16, verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Koat, and the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, and the son of El Eliab, and On, the son of Pela, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes, princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. So these were well-known men. These weren't regular people amongst Israel. These are well-known men of renown that stood up before Moses. Come on. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And they gathered themselves against Moses and against Aaron. So if they're gathering themselves against Moses and against Aaron, who are they really gathering against? You. 
The Most High God. Why is that? Why do you say the Most High God? Moses, uh, the Most High is the one that ordained that position to Moses and Aaron. The Most High God did that. So when they were speaking out against Moses and Aaron, they were speaking out against God. Come on. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and Aaron, mm -hmm. and against Aaron, and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy. Mm -hmm. Every one of them and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. So they forgot that the Most High put Moses and Aaron ab um, above the congregation to lead the congregation. And these men, guess what? They had position. They had rank. They had responsibilities. But it wasn't enough for them. It was not enough for them. Because in verse 2, it said they were princes, 250 princes, famous in the congregation, meaning their works. And men of renown. But they didn't have that gratitude. They didn't have that respect unto Moses. They were murmurers and backbiters. Okay? Read. Verse 4. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. And he spake unto Korah and upon, unto all the con unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy. So the Most High is going to work a work and show who is his. Come on. And will cause him to come near unto him. Even him who he had chosen will he, will he cause to come near unto him. This do. Take you censors, Korah, and all his company, and put fire therein, mm -hmm. and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the men whom the Lord doeth, Doth, choose, doth choose. Doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. Come on. And Moses said unto Korah, Here, I pray you, you son, ye sons of Levi. So Levi was wicked as hell back then. Come on, it's still wicked today. Seem it, it but a small, a small thing unto you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel. Why? To bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord. Officer Emmanuel, how was Levi separated? Somebody give him a mic. Verse 9. See? No, 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 no. That was a question. He wanted me to yeah, read I want, it. Yeah, I want him to answer that. You want, you want him to read it again? All right, go ahead. Read it again. Seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near, near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord. So the Lord uh, separated uh, the line, the Levites, unto himself during, the, uh, during this time when they came out of Egypt to do the service for him. So unto the line of Aaron was to be the high priest. And then the rest of the Levites were to serve Aaron's, Aaron's uh, sons and then serve in the congregation in the midst of the tabernacle. Very so good. every inheritance we get through tithe and offering should be for them. Very good. So these Levites weren't satisfied with this. They wanted more. Okay? But they were separate unto the Most High God. They were joined unto God. That's what Levi means, joined unto me. Okay? They had to offer up sacrifices in the temple. Okay? The Most High separated them just for that. But it wasn't enough for them. Come on. And to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. And he had brought thee near to him and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee. And seek ye the priesthood also, mm -hmm. for which cause both, the, both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the, against the Lord. And what is Aaron, that ye murmur against him? Oh, there we go again. Is that murmuring? Well, let's see how God deals with murmurers and backbiters. Perhaps God just gives them a, a tap on the back, a little pat on the back. Hey, buddy, don't do it again. You'll be all right. Just stop talking. Stop talking-ish, all right? Come on. Let's read. Let's see what happens. Come and, on. And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said, We will not come up. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up 
out of the land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except thou makest thyself altogether a prince over us. Well, so they seen the miracles. They know, they know who put Moses and Aaron over the congregation of the Lord. The Most High did it because he showed all the miracles, but they were still murmuring. They even told Moses that they ain't coming up. Moses called for them and said, oh, F that dude, I ain't going up. Come on. Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey, mm -hmm. or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Come on. Will thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. Mm. And Moses was very wroth. So Moses was tight. He was very upset at what he was hearing. Come on. And said unto the Lord, Respect not thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, mm -hmm. neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy company. That's, that verse 15, what we're reading is what? What are we reading in verse 15? Read that again. Verse 15. And Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, Respect not thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. What is that talking about? Somebody answer. Soldier James. Uh, Moses was still showing brotherly love, you know, and um, they didn't have that same brotherly love towards Moses. Okay. That's what I'm getting out of it. All right, okay. What else? Pass it to the uh, Soldier Josiah in front of you. Pretty much the same thing. Yeah, Moses was, uh, he was mad. He was like, I ain't do nothing to y'all. And he was uh, pretty much telling God, like, don't, uh... can you read, can you read that again? Also? Verse 15, and Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, respect not thou their offering. Because Mo uh, Moses was saying, don't respect their offerings, their blood sacrifices that they was given. He said, mm -hmm. don't, don't, do don't deal with it. Okay, so they were basically, they were mad at Moses for what? For him uh, being the uh, the leader. What else? I'm not sure. They were mad at Mo. You want to give it a shot, Soldier James? Again, you had your hand up again. Yeah. Uh, go back up to. Uh, when you was reading that. Uh, I was kind of thinking about verse 14. It seemed like they were really mad because you know they was enjoying you know the fruits of uh, Egypt. You know, so they was like really at the end of the day they was really pissed off. Because Moses was like, I mean, he, they wouldn't eat the things. But Moses they, said, read, read what Moses said and stay, stay there. Read what Moses mm -hmm. said in that verse, officer, Mike. And Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, respect not thou their offering. Okay, next part. I have not taken one ass from them. I have not taken one ass from them. Come on. Neither have I hurt one of them. What is he saying? Yeah, I'm, I don't get that one. Yes, I'm you just, do. I'm yes, just... you do. No, no, no. Stay right there. You get it. Yeah, I'm like I said. Moses I'm... said... Mm -hmm. He told the Most High, I didn't take one ass from him. Right. Meaning a donkey, right? Right. Yes, sir. I didn't hurt them. Right. Why is he saying that? He's saying because he showed them love. You know, he, he was applying the scripture. So they were mad at him for what? Uh, they were murmuring for what? Because he was keeping the commandments and they wasn't. That's they were mad at him for no Zerubbabel. <laughs> it's real easy, no brother. No reason. That's ah, I'm there we go. He said right before you passed the mic. Hey, look, 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 give us a rebel shot. You probably... You were going to say the same thing? I was going to say, go back to the same thing. You read in Exodus 16 with the manna and so forth, and they were murmuring and complaining. And it wasn't Moses the one who led them and so forth. The Most High led them. Yeah. They were really complaining for nothing. But in Exodus 16, it explains as well. It says, you, you think you murmured against Moses, but you murmured against the Lord. Yeah, so they were complaining for no reason. They was mad at Moses for no reason. But think about the murmuring and the backbiting that we do in, a, in, in um, amongst Israel. It's really from no reason. It's really for no reason. It's small things that could be worked out from sister to sister or from brother to brother. All right? Get me Matthew 5. Hold hold what you got, what you was reading in number 16. Hold that place, Officer Mike Judah. Get me, um, get me Matthew 5, 22. Matthew chapter 5, verse 22. Come on. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger so of the judgment. So that was the same thing those brothers was doing in Numbers. Chapter 16 that the sons of Levi was doing. They were angry with Mo Moses for no cause, without a reason. Come on. And whosoever shall say unto his brother, Raka, 
shall be in danger of the council. Shall be in danger of the council. Come on. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Thou fool. That's what they did to Moses. When they say, when Moses said, come up, when he called for Dathan, and they said, man, we ain't going. That's them calling him a fool. God said they shall be danger of fire. That's that hatred that you have for your brother in your heart that you can't get rid of. That danger, that, that, that um, hatred that you have in your, in your hearts for the sisters and you can't get rid of, which will cause you to murmur and backbite and hate each other. Come on. Therefore, if thy bring thy gift to the altar. Drop that. Go back to number 16. Start out from where you left off. Numbers chapter, six, 16, chapter 16, verse 15. And Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, Respect not thou their offering. Mm -hmm. I have not taken one ass from them. I haven't done anything to these brothers. Come on. Neither have I hurt one of them. Uh -huh. And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow. And take every man his censer and put incense in them. And bring ye before the Lord, every man his censer, 250 censers. Thou, thou also and Aaron, each of you, his censer. And they took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid, and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them into the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. This was a wicked Negro, Korah. Wicked. Come on. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in the moment. So the Most High was tired. He was tired of the murmuring. He was tired of the backbiting. So he said, you know what? I'm going to bring death. I'm going to bring destruction. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want to fall into that, into that um, instance where the Most High has to step in. Okay, come on. And they fell upon their faces and said, O oh God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and will thou be wroth with all the congregation? The Most High will do that. The Most High will, the Most High, a lot of times you have people that get caught up and fall into judgments of other people. Why? Because they see what's going on and they're too scared to speak on it, too weak to speak on it. Or they'll turn a blind eye. That's what I'm telling y'all. Be careful with these clicks. There should be no clicks. Be, be careful with you, these clicks. You and your click gonna fall into a pit. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Mm -hmm. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram. And the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, for the tents of these wicked men. So if there's sin going on in the body, and you know it, you best speak on it or separate yourself from that wicked one. Let us know. If you got a sister com uh, um, commonly reported as a backbiter or murmurer, remove yourself from the presence of that sister. So when judgment fall, it don't fall on you. Come on. And touch nothing of theirs. Least ye be consumed in all their sins. Come on, because that was contagious. Contagious sins. Come on. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, and mm -hmm. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram and every, on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord had sent me to do all these works. For I have not done them of mine own mind. If these men die, the, com the common debt of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord had not sent me. So if these guys die a regular death, like sickness or so forth, then you know what? The Most High, you didn't send me. I am not a prophet of God. This was Moses speaking. But the Most High was about to do something spectacular on the earth to show everybody that Moses and Aaron were his chosen ones. That's who he put up as leaders over the congregation. So why are you murmuring against mine elect? Come on. But if the Lord make a new thing in the earth, and the earth open her mouth 
and swallow them up with all that appertain 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 unto them. Meaning all those things that they had in their tabernacle that God said not to touch. Come on. And they go down quick into the pit. Mm -hmm. Then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. That's what we call today sinkholes. But this sinkhole was different. This sinkhole would open up and then close back up. Come on. And it came to pass, as he had made an end to, of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up. And their houses and all the men that appertain unto Coral and, and all their gods. Goods. All their goods. They and all that appertain to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, Least the earth swallow us up also. And there came out a fire from so the Lord. That's the spirit that we're supposed to have. When we see certain things going on, we have to be mindful. Are we walking in sin? Why is everybody getting sick? Why are there accidents? And I'm not talking about once, once in a while, once in a blue thing. I'm talking about often, like, like a domino effect. Every week there's something different. Every day there's something different. That means there's some evil going on. All right, and the Most High is in the midst. And we don't want that judgment to fall on the congregation. So we have to be circumspect. Come on. And there came out a fire from the Lord, mm -hmm. and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying... All right, stop there, right there. Get me um, 1 John 3.15. So we got to be mindful. These things were written for an example. These things were written for an example. The book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 15. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer had eternal life abiding in him. So these brothers that we just read in number 16, they were murderers. They hated Moses for no reason. Moses himself said, Lord, what did I do? I didn't take an ass from them. I didn't do nothing to them. But they hate. My hands are clean. All right? And that's the same way we got to be up in here. Okay? We shouldn't hate our brothers or sisters in our heart. All right? Come on. Verse 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us, and we ought not to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso we had, ought we ought to. Verse sixteen. And says, we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So how are you gonna lay down your life for your brother or sister, but y'all can't get along? Sister come into your house, over to your house to help you clean. You can't even open the door. You can't trust that sister with nothing. If a brother did that, I wouldn't be able to trust him. That's hatred. Murmuring, backbiting, that's hatred. How many of you brothers will catch a straight, will, will catch a bullet for your brother? Especially you brothers that go to camp. You don't got to answer, just within yourself. But if you know you got hatred for that brother, you're not going to, you're not going to turn the other cheek. So these are the, these are levels that we have to grow into. Even the sisters. Okay, these are levels that we have to grow to. All right. Uh, drop that. Uh, read um, verse 10. Stay in that same chapter, verse 10. First John chapter 3 and verse 10. Mm -hmm. In this the children of God are manifest, and the, children of the devil, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth righteousness is doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. You hear that? So it says the children, it says whoever Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. It's all about loving your brothers and sisters. That's what charity is. And a lot of us, we lack charity. And charity is a big thing. Charity is a big thing. When you read the New Testament, charity always comes up. Love your brother as you love yourself. Don't do something to a sister that you know you wouldn't want her to do to you. Don't speak to a sister a certain way, and you know you don't want her to speak to you like that. Okay? These are things that we have to keep in mind. All right? Give me um, Ecclesiast Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Ecclesiastes 
Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Some of us might have that mind state. Well, I'm doing this on the low. They ain't going to know. It feels good. I'm going to keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. No harm, no harm has come to me yet. My adulterous self. Sleeping with prostitutes. No harm has come to me yet. Come on. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So the heart, which is deceitful above all, which is the mind, has wrought in us to do evil because that sentence has not been proclaimed yet. And what, what is that sentence? Judgment. Judgment from the Most High God. Okay, a lot of us, a lot of us try to do things on the low, thinking people ain't going to find out, both man and woman. All right, but there is a God. There is a God. Okay, Ezekiel chapter 12. And the Most High speaks about that thing. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 22. You're going to read 22 to 25. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 22. Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel What saying? is a proverb? Somebody. Proverb is a wise saying, okay? So what is the wise saying that we hear amongst Israel? Come on. The days are prolonged. The days are prolonged, meaning the days of judgment are prolonged. The days of me doing evil are prolonged. That's what we just read in Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Come on. And every vision fell it. And every vision fell it. The vision of the Most High putting your wicked behind a death. That's what it's talking about. Come on. Tell them, therefore, mm -hmm. thus said the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease. So the Most High said, look, a time is going to come when he's going to make that proverb to cease. That's why in First Peter's earlier, what did it say? The first scripture we started the class off with. Say it louder. Say it on the mic. That judgment begins with the house of God. Judgment is going to begin with the house of God. That's what we see in a lot of things happening amongst the body. Okay. People dropping ill, car accidents. Not to say that person was in sin, but there's, there's some sin going on somewhere. There's some sin going on somewhere. All right? And it will be revealed. Come on. Tell them, therefore, thus says the Lord God, mm -hmm. I will make this proverb to cease, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, the days are at hand, that the effect of every vision... For there shall be no more any vain vision nor flattering div divination within the house of Israel. Come on. For I am the Lord. I will speak. And the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. Like, guess what? No murderers shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. If you hate your brother or sister in, in your heart, you shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. These are things that were said, which is going to come to pass whether you believe it or not. That's on you. That is on you. Was that all of verse 25? No, sir. Read. It shall be no more prolonged, for in your days, O rebellious house, will I say to the word, will I say the word, and will perform it, said the Lord God. All right. And that's for, because a lot of us, a lot of us were still, that's why we tell you, brothers and sisters, be very careful, especially partaking in the breaking of the bread and wine. Okay, you should not be calling yourself an Israelite, come in here congregating, but on Sunday you're running up into the Christian church or the African traditional church or the Baptist church or whatever. Okay, that is demonic. You have one foot in the truth, one toe in the truth, and the whole rest of your body is out. Okay, because that's another thing I'm hearing about. Brothers and sisters come in here on Saturday, but on Sunday they're going, to, they're going, they're going right back to the Catholic church. I mean, you're not a believer. Just stay home. Stay home. Look at T.D. Jakes. We were watching him on the screen the other day. Sit on the couch, eat your bag of potato chips, watch T.D. Jakes. You don't got to come up in here because you're not a believer yet. You're still not a believer yet. You're still battling Caesar Borgia in your mind. You're still worshiping the white image of Christ. You don't believe. So if you don't believe, stay home. Because that could be you bringing... Bringing judgment into the body. 
because we have an unbelieving Christian in here. All right? Come on. You finish? Yes, sir. You want more? Hebrews 10.31. And that, let me tell y'all something about these Christian churches, too, with this faith healing. Brothers and, brothers and sisters spending big money to jump on a plane, go all the way to, what, I'm not even going to say it, go all the way somewhere for some Christian pastor to throw some dirty, unholy water on you. God knows where, what river he got it from to heal you of whatever sickness you say you have, whether it be physical or spiritual. How do we heal our, our, our sicknesses, brothers? Through the what? The word is what cures us, keeping the commandments of God and relying on brothers and sisters to fast on your behalf and pray for you. Not the laying of hands. That's done. And that was for the apostles and disciples. That ain't for no damn Christians over here on this side or the east side. They don't believe. They still serve in white Jesus. But you putting your faith in them. You put in your faith in some, in some crappy faith healers. That's witchcraft. That's sorcery. And in the old times, we used to burn witch, witches and sorcerers. Bringing that mess in the body. You don't believe. If you don't believe, stay home. We ain't going to talk about you. Just stay home. Watch TV. Watch online. Get your mind right. All right? Come on. Hebrews, Hebrews 10, chapter 10, verse 31. It is a fearful thing. To fall into the hands of the living God. So God said it's a fearful thing. Because a, a lot of times when judgment comes out, judgment's about to come out, brothers and sisters will stay home. I ain't going. I'm not going to the school. Y'all worried about the wrong thing. You got, you got men with rank in Israel that was judged before. You know, whether they got put out or put on blast, but they corrected themselves. That's the character of, of a good man. All right, when you're able to take correction and come back stronger. But it's a fearful thing to fall into the hand of the Lord. When you don't take correction, you continue in your murmuring, you continue in your backbiting, you continue in your adultery, you continue in your lying, you continue in your, in your, your BS faith healing, Christianity, doctrine, one foot in Israel, one foot in the Catholic Church. God said he's going to judge you. When God judges you, we can't help you. There's nothing we can do. Because the correction came out and you didn't take the correction. So now that's on you. And God could judge you by way of disease. God could judge you by way of car accident. You get hit by a truck. You don't know what happened. There's all manners of way God could judge you. Not just um, growing old and dying. This is something that we have to understand. We don't know what walk we're in. You really don't know what walk you're in. Some of you really do not believe. Y'all don't know what walk you're in. I'm telling y'all, just stay home, watch TV, man. You'll be all right. Watch TV. Don't come here to watch me. Sit home, watch TV. All right, come on. Hebrews 10, 31 again. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God, but call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions, you hear that? So after we got illuminated, what illuminates us? Soldier Caleb. What illuminates us? The commandments. The commandments. Well, where would you go to, to prove that? Uh, Proverbs 6 and 23. All right, let's get that real quick. So the commandment illuminates us. Come on. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. All right, go back to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 33. Partly, whilst ye were made a gazing stock, both by the reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst ye become companions of them that were so used. All right, stop right there. Give me uh, Sirach 23, 17 to 19. Sirach chapter 23, verse 17. So it's a fearful thing to fall into the hand of the living God. Come on. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. That's the adulterous brothers. Sleep a 400-pound woman down to 90 pounds. Whether she got one teeth or no teeth. 
Man, straight gums. Some brothers, it's better, brother. It's straight gums. Okay, some brothers like that. All right, God calls you a whoremonger. Come on. <laughs> he will not leave off till he die. He will not leave off until you die, whether you catch AIDS, syphilis, condom pops, or something happens. You're not going to leave off that lifestyle until you die. Come on. A man that break a wedlock, uh -huh. saying, thus is his heart. So Who? the man or woman that breaketh wedlock, come on. Saying, thus in his heart, mm -hmm. who seeth me? Just because brothers and sisters ain't there, who seeth me? I am compassed about with darkness. I'm compassed around with darkness, come on. The walls cover me, mm -hmm. and nobody seeth me. What need I to fear? You hear that? What need I to fear? But there's one person you should fear, come on. The Most High will not remember my sin. That's the man you should fear. The Most High. Come on. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men. Such men and women only fear the eyes of men. So you do things in secret, which could not only bring harm to yourself, first and foremost, but harm to the body. Come on. And know it not that the eyes of the Lord are ten times brighter than the sun. Most High sees everything. There's that little angel. Going back to the Most High, reporting everything. There's that little birdie in the congregation telling on what's going on. Okay, there's multiple eyes everywhere. We should fear the Most High Lord. Okay, give me James 5. There's more. There's more. Come on. Beholding all the ways of men mm -hmm. and considering the most secret parts. So the most secret thing that we do, God said he's going to consider that thing. Okay, and he will expose you one way or the other. Okay. You're going to get exposed. It happens. Time in and time out. Trust me. All right? Come on. That's it. James 5? James. James 5. Now let's get into some solutions for the problem. The murmuring, backbiting, the adultery, the fornication, the lying, the stealing, whatever thing, secret thing we're doing. Let's get into some solutions. James 5.16. James, chapter 5, verse 16. Confess your faults one to another. Confess your faults one to another. There's a brother or sister that you can counsel with. The scripture says to have one in a thousand. Okay? Not a brother or sister you know is going to keep your sin, and you're just going to keep doing it, and they're going to check you on it. That's those clicks. All right? That's the, those birds in the feather that flock together. Okay? Get a counsel. Or preferably somebody of rank that has some sense, all right, that's going to talk some sense into you, okay, that you can counsel with, okay, that you could trust as well too, all right? It says, confess your what? Faults one to another. Come on. And pray one for another. And pray one for another. A lot of times we don't do that. Pray for each other. Have faith in each other. The words of God is what's going to cure us of all these different illnesses that we have, Okay. Come on. That ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. You hear that? Sisters, brothers, if you're battling something, whether it be some kind of illness or sin, it says the, the, the what? The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man mm -hmm. availeth much. All right. So the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Okay. And we've seen that in Israel. We had a, a sister that needed um, a transplant. She was on the brink of death. We prayed. We fasted. Some brothers, uh, brothers and sisters came up to try to donate. And guess what? At the very last minute, they found uh, um, an organ, a perfect, a perfect match. Because that person got put to death in uh, Syracuse, I think it was. Syracuse, New York. Car accident or something. Happened here too, right? You got what? Come on, read. But the, the Most High God only works like that when we're in the spirit. When we're out the spirit, there's murmuring on the side going on, backbiting, hating, adultery, whatever. Guess what? The Most High is going to leave us as is. People's going to be getting sick, accidents, deaths, everything. Just boom, happening one by one, all after another. And you looking back, you're like, damn, what the hell is going on here? There's some sin there. That's what's going on. All right. Come on, read. Verse 17, Elias was a man subject. Stop there. Get me Matthew 17. 
So one solution is confessing our faults and praying for each other, having that righteous prayer. Okay? Now let's go to another solution, Matthew 17. Matthew 17, verse 15 to 17. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 15. Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is, lun he is lunatic. He's a lunatic. And we got a lot of lunatics amongst Israel. All right? I know we don't got no lunatics in here, so I'm not going to say that. People get offended and not come back. All right. Matthew 17, 15 again. Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic mm -hmm. and sore vexed. Mm -hmm. For oft times... He falleth into the fire and oft into the water. Uh -huh. And I brought him to thy dis disciples, and they could not cure him. Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation. So we got to have faith. We have to have faith. And we know Israel's of faith is a faithless and perverse generation. That's why we require what? A sign. Many of us don't believe in God. We don't believe in the word of the Most High God could cure us. So we'll, 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 we'll go online, we'll book a ticket to go all the way to Africa to let, to let some dusty pastor put his hands on you in some dirty water to heal you, which is all sorcery and witchcraft. Because you don't believe. You're faithless people. God calls us a faithless and perverse generation. Come on. How long shall I be with you? Mm -hmm. How long shall I suffer you? Uh -huh. Bring him hither to me. Come on. And Jesus rebuked the devil. So Jesus rebuked the devil, which was causing this, this child to be a lunatic and vexed. Come on. And he departed out of him. Uh -huh. And the child was cured from, the very, uh, from that very hour. Come on. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast, out, cast him out? Listen to this. And Come Jesus on. said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed. How small is a mustard seed? Christ is just saying, just have faith like the grain of a mustard seed. The grain of a mustard seed is extremely small. Come on. You shall say unto this mountain. If you had faith, if you brothers and sisters had faith, you'll, faith, you'll be able to say to this mountain. Come on. Remove hence to yonder place, mm -hmm. and it shall remove, mm -hmm. and nothing shall be impossible unto you. And nothing shall be impossible to us if we have faith. Come on. How be it? How be it? Although this, we may have faith, although we may have faith, come on. This kind. This kind of demon. Come on. Go it out. Go it not out, but by prayer and fasting. So a lot of times the things that we battle with is not going to go away unless we pray and fast. Whether it be murmuring spirit, backbiting spirit, adultery, fornication, lying. Sometimes there's a lot of things that when we find ourselves constantly in the midst of that, the Most High says, it's time to pray. It's time to fast. One day might not be enough. You might have to fast for three days, four days, if you can endure, of course. Don't mess around and pass out and drop dead. Okay? Practice. Practice. Try to practice a day. Then try to do maybe a day and a half. See how long you could go. Keep pushing the envelope to see your max. Okay? But if you find yourself queasy and worry, of course, break the fast. But a lot of times, certain spirits that we bat battle with, whether even be um, hatred or some of us got bad tempers, certain things we have to overcome by praying and fasting. And we have to have faith in that. All right? Give me Leviticus 5 verse 1. Last scripture. Leviticus chapter 5 verse 1. This is, this is very important. Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And if a soul sin, if you brothers or sisters sin, come on, and hear the voice of swearing and is a witness whether he had seen or known of it. So you know what's going on, but you won't say nothing because that person is your friend. You might go to their house and watch TV, watch shows, watch programs, go to movies, have a few drinks, but you know that person is in the midst of adultery, fornication, murmuring, backbiting, hatred. Come on. If he do not utter it. If you don't say anything to, if you don't say anything, not only to that person, but letting other people know about what they're doing. Come on. Then he shall bear his iniquity. Now that's talking about sin, not somebody who's battling something like the constant thought. For example, if somebody has the constant thought of adultery. 
brother, I can't stand my wife. I wish I could go get another wife. This, this girl that lived down the block, she fine as hell, man. Oh, man, blah, 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 blah. But he hasn't acted on that. Those are thoughts. You correct them on that thought. But you don't have to bring it, especially if the person is counseling on you, with you, about that particular sin. You don't have to bring it to the whole congregation. Let everybody know the brother's business, especially if the brother chose you as a counselor. But there's a difference. If he said, hey, you know Shaniqua that I told you about that live on, that, on my block? And you're like, yeah, 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 I know her. What happened, man? You still thinking about her? Nah, man. I ain't, I ain't thinking about her no more, man. I ran up in that. That's sin. If you, if you don't say anything about that, the same judgment that's supposed to fall on that brother is now going to fall on you. And it works both ways. Same thing with the sisters. Y'all understand that? All right. Read it again. Leviticus chapter 5, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And if a soul sin and hear the voice of swearing and is a witness, whether he seen or whether he had seen or known of it, if he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. All right. And that's what the most high God says. Get me first, John. Let's end it on this. Lord willing, we uh Repent. If we got any secret sins going on, repent of that speedily and swiftly. Get me uh, Third John one and eleven. Third Third John verse eleven. I'm sorry. Third John verse eleven. Beloved, follow not that which is evil. So the Most High God is telling us, follow that which is, follow not that which is evil. Come on. But that which is good. Follow what is good. And what's good? What's he, good, brothers? The laws. What's good, sisters? I didn't hear. I only heard like three sisters. Mm-hmm. Come on. He that doeth good is of God. Come on. But he that doeth evil is had not seen God. So he that doeth evil sh hath not seen God. And you will not see God because you are going to die. And you will not get the kingdom of heaven. All right? So we're going to end it on that note. Uh, Lord willing, um, y'all got something out of today's class. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.